Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, each of you has founded an extraordinarily successful company. And they're both American companies. And I think um, I would be remiss if I didn't say congratulations. I'm very proud of the fact that it was American ingenuity uh, that did this. I think we can also both agree that uh, both Twitter and Facebook have enormous power as a result of your success. Um, you're, not you're not companies, you're countries, at least in terms of power. I want to I want to test a, a point of view here. I'm not sure I subscribe to it, but I want to get your thoughts on it. Mr. Dorsey, do you believe everything you read? No. Why not? I think it's healthy to have uh, skepticism about everything and, and have a mindset of um, uh, verifying it and um, um, and using as much information as possible to do so. Do you have somebody on your staff who protects you from reading things that they think you shouldn't? No. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, do you believe everything you read? No, Senator. Why not? Uh, because a lot of things are incomplete or incorrect. So you exercise your own judgment? Yes, Senator. Okay. Do, do you have somebody on your staff whose job is to filter things that they think you should not be reading? Uh, Senator, not, not externally, although I would hope that the teams that I work with internally do their best to uh, make sure that the information that they're presenting me with are always accurate. Okay. I want to, uh, here, here is a point of view. I'm not sure I subscribe to it, but it is a legitimate point of view, I think, and I'd like to know your thoughts on it. You have both, and this is directed to each of you, you have both Democrats and Republicans upset with you. The Democrats are upset with you, this point of view holds, because they want you to publish, I'm not using that word as a, as a term of, uh, of art or science here with any special meanings. The Democrats want you to publish stuff on your platforms that they agree with, but they don't want you to publish stuff that they disagree with. And this point of view also holds that the Republicans are upset with you because they want you to publish things on your platforms that they agree with, but they don't want you to publish stuff on your platforms that they disagree with. What if we had a rule? What if, what if your companies had a rule? This is a question, not a suggestion. What if your companies had a rule that said, okay, people aren't morons. I, I would like to treat people as they treat me. Um, that is that I can read what I want to read and exercise my own good judgment about whether I choose to believe it. So here's the rule we're adopting. If you go on Twitter or Facebook, you can't bully people. You can't threaten people. Maybe this is a subset of both of those, but you can't commit a crime with your words, and you can't incite violence. But other than that, you can print any damn thing you want to, and we'll let our users judge. 
Give me your thoughts on that. Those are generally the rules we have. I mean, our, our focus on these policies. No, no you is, don't, Mr. Doris. Excuse me for interrupting, but, but you're censoring right and left, <clears throat> trying to make both sides happy, and you're making neither side happy. No, that, that's not the intention. The intention is to— I know to, it's not the intention, but it's it, the intention, but it's the result. I, I, I can see why you might say that and why you might perceive that, and, and that's why we, we, you know, we do think it's important that we add more transparency to how we moderate content, that we give more control to individuals to moderate their own content and focus on algorithms. But a lot of our policies are focused on making sure that people feel that they can express themselves in the first place and not driven away. Everything you mentioned about bullying, about harassment around illegal content or violence, incitement to violence, that is what our policies are. And that is I know, and intent. excuse me for interrupting, but my time's limited, because, and I want to hear from Mr. Zuckerberg, but you're not just doing that. You're, you've started to censor content. Why not have both Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump able to say whatever they want to on your platform? Mr. Zuck, so long as they don't threaten, bully, incite violence, commit a crime. I'm not justifying the use of either Twitter or Facebook to, to, uh, to hurt the Rohingyas. Mr. Zuckerberg, what are your thoughts on, on my suggestion? Get out of the censorship business, other than the exceptions I talked about. Senator, in principle, I agree with what you are saying, although I think that there are more categories of harm um, than just the ones that you've mentioned. So, um, but I think the basic principle behind what you're saying is a, a definition of free expression that says that people should be able to share their opinions broadly, um, except if it's going to cause imminent or irreparable harm to another person, which now even the most ardent First Amendment supporters, um, you know, agree that uh, you shouldn't be able to yell fire in a crowded theater uh, if there's not actually a fire, right? Because that could put people in the risk of imminent harm. So you mentioned terrorism, you mentioned child exploitation and bullying as forms of harm. And I think a lot of the debate is around what are other forms of harm. Um, for example, we're in the middle of a pandemic um, and, and we've assessed that um, misinformation about COVID and treatments uh, that, that could put people in, in additional risk of getting the disease um, or not seeking the right treatment if they have it, um, that those are also things that could cause imminent harm. Um, we've taken the position that... M Mr. Zuckerberg, let me interrupt you, and I really do apologize, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be cut off in a second, and appropriately so. I'm not saying you're wrong, by doing what you just described, but that makes you a publisher. And uh, that, that, uh, that creates problems with Section 230. And I, I just think it, one point of view is that at some point, we, we've got to trust people to use their own good judgment to decide what they choose to believe and not believe, and not, not, not try to uh, assume that we're smart and they're stupid and that we can we can discern believable information and information that shouldn't be believed but everybody else is too stupid to do it <laughs>